Hey guys, we're back at our SSZ 1430 14 sear heat pump. Today we're going to do a little bit more talking about the components, in particular the contactor. Pretty simple device, we're going to see how it's wired. I think most people know what it does, but we'll talk a little bit about that as well. This contactor would be described as a single pole or one pole contactor. Only one leg is switched beneath this cover here. This cover is on to keep insects out of it. We'll take it off here in a second. Take a look at the switch. There is a low voltage coil on the back side, which you can see a little bit right through there. Let's see if we can get a light on it. The low voltage coil on the back side. You see the copper color there. When low voltage passes through that coil, it creates magnetism. The switch closes underneath here. The magnet pulls it down. Voltage flows through here. Your components come on. Compressor and outdoor fan motor. Or hopefully they do. As long as your other components, like our dual run capacitor, are in good working order. So basically on the bottom, both high voltage wires, 120 volts, L1 and L2. You see down here, it actually says L1, L2. It refers to the top two as T1 and T2. hundred twenty volts to ground and even when this thing is off since voltage is still passing through here you still receive hundred twenty volts to ground on the opposite side so just because it's off doesn't mean you can put your hand on it or things like that uh, there's still voltage on that side and a lot of the units will have notification on the outside that that is the case there's voltage potential at all terminals even when off as you can see on the bottom of the contactor, there are two wires, a black and red. One of those wires goes to the crankcase heater. Another wire goes to the crankcase heater sensor. And it's a temperature sensor that looks just like a defrost thermostat. And what happens is when the compressor comes on, it heats up the sensor, opens the circuit, and the crankcase heater goes off. Pretty simple. Like I said, it looks just like a Defrost thermostat is clipped to the discharge line of the compressor. This one's located a few inches after the muffler. That's what these two wires are, and that's the only two wires on the bottom. You'll have two more wires coming in when the unit is wired. That's from the disconnect. And then the third will be the ground, right there. On the top of the contactor, we have our T1 and T2. You can refer back to our capacitor, dual run capacitor video to see some of the descriptions of these terminals. I'll put the link up here. The run wires for the compressor and the jumper to the common on the capacitor which has the run wire for the fan motor originate here. Opposite the run you'll have the common for those motors. The compressor runs directly to the compressor. The black wire for the compressor runs directly to the compressor common. The other one runs to the defrost board. It is the common for the outdoor fan motor. It runs up here to the switch that will turn it off in defrost. So it's pretty simple. That's pretty much all of our high voltage. You have our run wires for the motors, our common wires for the motors, and we have our crankcase heater wires on the bottom. Sometimes the crankcase heaters run from one side of the switch to the other, so when the switch comes on, there's no voltage and it shuts off. Because in between these terminals, with this switch off, there's voltage. Because remember, it passes from this side all the way through the motors back around to here. So there's voltage, but when it shuts on, the voltage potential disappears and the crankcase heater goes off. So there's a couple different ways to do it. Discharge temperature sensor is how it's done here. You can do it this way as well. On either side of the contactor, there's low voltage wires. We have one yellow here, two blues on this side. Sometimes on the contactor they'll both be on one side. The Honeywell was like that. The blues on this side are common. Common side of 24 volts. One of them's running directly out to the field wiring here. The other one's going all the way up here to the defrost control board. On the opposite side, we have our yellow 
You can call it Y, Y1 compressor, whatever you want to call it, contactor. Goes back up to the defrost control board. Now before that low voltage wire can make it to the contactor, the signal will come in. Usually you'll run a yellow wire from your air handler. It'll meet up with this particular wire right here. Oh, sorry. The blue and red wire right here. They're different colors on different units. And actually pass into the unit, into the low and high pressure switches, then come back to the defrost board right here. So before your Y1 contactor compressor signal, whatever you want to call it, 24 volts, comes in and gets to your contactor, it'll pass through the low and high pressure switches and the defrost control board. If those switches say everything's all right, basically they're closed, it'll make it down here, energize the contactor, send power to the outdoor fan motor and the compressor, and as long as the components are good and the dual run capacitor is good, they will start. And that is the single pole contactor, pretty common. For reference, here is an example of a single pole contactor, like we've just talked about. The low voltage terminals on the side. This one's White Rogers. You have terminals on the top and the bottom. Here's our double pole contactor. Same thing, except it's switched on both legs. So on this one, you'd probably put your crankcase heater off the bottom with a discharge temperature switch. Finally, in more commercial applications, you'll see this three pole contactor and your three phase stuff. Very similar, this one's a 24 volt coil, except you'll find this one on the end. It won't be on either side. And sometimes in commercial, the coils are different voltages. 240 volts, 120 volts. But this is just an example of a 24 volt coil. Here's a look on the inside of the switch. Pretty common. Whenever it energizes to the low voltage coil, it draws it in, voltage passes through. The reason why you have the carbon built up and all the arcing is because sometimes it arcs between these two terminals when it starts to draw in. That's why when you get a real burned up looking contactor, that'll be the reason behind that. Go ahead and change that bad boy out, depending on how rough it looks, it's your judgment. But that's it, that's our contactors, residential HVAC.